Hey guys, it's Ellen Brock, novel editor. This is the first in a series of four videos about each of the writer types. If you didn't see my video about the four types of writers, I recommend that you watch that video first because it will help you to understand which type applies to you the best. And that will let you know whether or not these tips in this video will really help you or not. But if you need a refresher on the previous video, in a nutshell, the four writer types are built on two continuums. The first continuum, is plotter to pantser, plotter being of course someone who plots their novel in advance, who figures out the structure and things like that before going into the first draft, and a pantser is someone who flies by the seat of their pants or sort of wings the first draft or maybe the entire process of writing the novel. The other continuum is methodological to intuitive. Methodological meaning you use processes, systems, for example, story structure and scene structure, things like that to create your novel uh, versus intuitive, which is more about using your gut feeling or following your heart or just using your intuition in order to create your novel. So those are the two continuums, and that's where we get the four types, methodological pantser, methodological plotter, intuitive pantser, and intuitive plotter. Because this is built on two continuums, it's possible that you'll sit sort of evenly between two types. You could even sit right at the center of all four types. So you might need to take a mix and match approach to the tips in this video series. So some might work well for you from one type, but others might work well from another type. So don't feel like this is a prescriptive video or you have to use every piece of advice that I give in this video. This is just meant to help the process for people who are more specifically and more completely falling into this one category. So you might just fall a little bit into this category and so maybe only some of the tips will be helpful for you. So today we are talking about the methodological pantser. And the methodological pantser is a writer who really relies on methodologies and systems like story structure and scene structure and things like that in order to create their novel and polish their novel, but they need more freedom in the creation process as well. They don't do well with very rigid plotting. They need some freedom to explore. This is a type of writer who does really well building up their idea and they really need to see things on the page to start to refine what they're trying to accomplish. They're not going to go into projects knowing exactly what they want to accomplish. It's, it's a growing, building up process for them. So my first tip for this writer type is to treat your process as fluid and flexible. You'll find a lot of writing advice online that recommends that you write the first draft all the way through without stopping or that you plot the entire novel in advance, but neither of these approaches are really going to work for you because you need a much more fluid and flexible approach to the process. You're also unlikely to have defined stages to your process, so you're unlikely to feel that you're just in the plotting phase or just in writing or just in editing. You're likely doing a lot of different things at the same time. This also means you're not very likely to have defined numbered drafts, like some of the other writer types might be able to say this is their third draft or their fifth draft. You're unlikely to really conceptualize it in that way because you are likely to revisit certain sections multiple times while leaving other sections alone. And you might be doing a lot of cutting and adding and moving and um, a lot of changing approaches and tactics throughout the process. In fact, this type often doesn't even conceptualize working on their novel in that way to begin with. I found a lot of writers of this type tend to say they're working on their novel, not really specifying draft numbers or that they're editing versus writing versus plotting. So just be fluid with how you approach the process. Refine your idea before writing the first draft. Even though you lean more towards pantser than plotter, it can still be extremely helpful to try to refine your ideas a little bit before you start writing the first draft. So methodological pantsers, they do best when they can see things down on paper and when they can really take a look at what they have. So even though you might have a lot of ideas in your head and you might be building those ideas up um, in a daydreaming kind of way, you're going to, to do a lot better when you can get those things down on paper and really look at what you have. And spending just a few days, maybe a few hours on a few days spread apart by maybe a couple weeks, it's going to help you to really develop and build up and refine your idea before you move into writing the first draft. In fact, doing this can actually save you 
months or maybe even years of editing. For methodological panthers, sort of magical things happen for them when they put things on paper, when they can really see it and look at it. So you might find also just by writing it down, all of a sudden you have plot holes getting solved and you have new ideas coming up and you're really developing and building this idea with very little effort. And it's not that you're plotting, you're just sort of collecting and gathering and building up what you want to accomplish with this book. Plot in advance only when it helps you. I highly recommend that this writing type doesn't try to act as if they're a methodological plotter and plot the entire story in advance. Sometimes you might desire to do a little more plotting than you normally would. Usually this happens because it, a previous experience with the novel resulted in sort of an endless editing cycle where you just couldn't clean up the rough draft and it got really frustrating and overwhelming. This can lead some methodological pantsers to try to lean more towards methodological plotter. This tends though to result in a lot of frustration and stress because you're not going to have a very easy time refining your ideas using this method. It's just going to be a little bit more challenging for you and you might end up with a draft that is very generic. Um, maybe you're just sort of picking the most obvious or logical plot points, but it's not really sparking any creativity or emotion or inspiration for you. And that's not going to ultimately result in a novel that you're happy with. So I highly recommend that you not get stuck fully plotting. If you do want to do some plotting, you can kind of use a simplified plotting method like a tentpole method where you're really only defining perhaps the first plot point, midpoint, and second plot point, just a few basic rough structural guidelines. You still have to be pretty flexible though because given your writer type, there's a good chance that you're not going to end up using those anyway. If you really, really want to save time and you're concerned about the process or the length that the process is going to take for you, you can kind of hack your brain a little bit by creating a fast summary exploratory draft. So basically a few dozen pages where you're just slapping it down as fast as possible and you're cutting out the showing elements like descriptions, dialogue, things like that. You're not bothering with that. You're just sort of telling the story as it would play out in a sort of summary or synopsis. This can help you to find more quickly where you're going to run out of steam with your idea or where you stop knowing what will happen next, or it might also reveal to you some contradictions or plot holes or things like that. And that can ultimately save you a lot of time. You could create an outline based on this summary draft and get quite a bit of the plot points in place. But I really only recommend doing this if you're very concerned about the amount of time that it's taking you, because if you're not concerned about um, deadlines or getting the book done more quickly, I don't think that this is necessarily the best or the best standalone approach for this type. Expect to run out of steam in the first draft. Whether you do any planning or plotting in advance or not, you're very likely to run out of steam somewhere around 20% to 60% into the first draft. This is really, really common with methodological pantsers. And I think it can be extremely helpful to expect this to happen so that you're not disappointed or disheartened. Something that I've seen a lot is that writers will interpret this as meaning that this idea isn't a good idea or this idea isn't the one, it's not their big idea and that they should just move on to a different project. If you do that, you will likely get stuck doing that forever because this is pretty much just expected as part of the process for the methodological pantser. It doesn't mean anything about the specific idea and switching to something else or a different project. It's not going to solve the problem because if we're being honest about what's causing this issue here, you can't write a novel purely on intuition if intuition isn't your strong point. So you're going into it with neither strong intuition about how to get those plot points in place automatically and without a plot or an outline. You can't make it all the way through a novel without either of those things. So you really need to, at that point, change tactics and start to do something else, start to move into plotting, planning, editing, things like that. So expect to run out of steam and don't feel discouraged or disheartened when it happens. Start editing as soon as you're ready. Now this is going to run contrary to a lot of writing advice that you'll see 
pretty much everywhere that will tell you not to edit your novel until you have a complete first draft. But for the methodological pantser, there's really no inherent benefit in doing this. If you know that you can't carry this draft any farther with what you have, or you feel stuck, or you know that you're building up from a shaky foundation, there's no reason to push yourself to finish a first draft that isn't working. If you know it's not working, it's going to save you time to simply stop and move into the editing phase. So start taking what you already have written and start applying those methods that you use to refine your stories and start actually building up something that you like and start creating a draft that you're happy with. There's nothing wrong with editing at whatever point in the process you want to do that. Avoid using word count as a measurement of success. So I've seen a lot of writers who use word count to indicate that they're moving forward in a project or that they're having success with a project. Before a methodological pantser, this really isn't a good idea. Your process is going to be very fluid and a little bit chaotic, and you're likely to be adding and subtracting words a lot. So you might one day end up cutting several thousand words. And if you use word count as a metric of success, you're going to feel like you're moving backwards when really is a huge step forwards. If you realize that a whole section of your novel isn't necessary, by cutting it, you're refining your vision and that's strengthening your book and that's a good thing. So if you do well with measuring success or tracking your progress in some way, I recommend using the time spent on the novel instead. So maybe you shoot for five hours a week or maybe 40 minutes a day, or maybe you try to sort of um, build up your own record for the longest amount of time in one day that you've worked on your book. Methodological pantsers actually tend to do well with long writing, plotting, editing sessions, as long as they're flexible about uh, how they use that time and don't get stuck doing just one task during that time. So using time can be a much better metric of success for this writing type than word count. Don't wait for inspiration. You will always do your best work if this is your type when you're sitting and you're looking at your paper and you're looking at your breakdowns of scenes or you're looking at your notes. You need to have something in front of you and you need to start building up and, and cutting down and refining by doing, not by waiting for inspiration. If you wait for strikes of inspiration, whether that's at the very beginning of the process, maybe you wanna write a book but you don't have an idea and you're just waiting for that idea to come. Or maybe it's later in the process and you're waiting for a solution and you're waiting for the perfect climax, for example, to just sort of come out of nowhere. It's probably not going to happen. You really need to sit down at, at your desk or wherever you like to work and really dig in and do some deep work in order to solve those problems. Try rigid story structure systems. I know that story structure can be challenging to understand. Often it's just a matter of finding the right person to explain it in the right way or to use the right words. So if you've had trouble in the past finding a structural system that makes sense for you, if you're a methodological type, you can't give up. You have to just keep trying to find someone who can explain it in a way where it clicks for you because you can't be methodological without methods. If you're still looking for a system that works for you, I recommend the structural systems that are a little bit more specific or have more points that you need to hit because this can help overcome the lack of strong intuition. Um, and I don't mean that to sound in any way like a negative thing. There's no end point difference in whether you use intuition or methodology to accomplish things. But if you are going to use methodology, you have to have methods that you can follow. So I really highly recommend either the 27 chapter method, which is a very specific uh, method that breaks the novel down into 27 distinct parts, which is a lot of parts that gives you a lot of specifics to work with. Or Blake Snyder's beat sheet, um, Save the Cat is the book that he wrote for screenwriters. There's also Save the Cat Writes a Novel, which adapts those ideas to novel writing. Uh, that said, his website is also fantastic. He has tons of breakdowns of movies and some books. And he also has 10 story types that take that beat sheet that he created and they make it even more nuanced and specific to the type of story that you want to tell. So I highly recommend Blake Snyder for that, as well as the 27 chapter method. I also highly recommend Larry Brooks' um, book, Story Engineering, if you're struggling with understanding 
the major plot points and how they work and why they're there, I find that his book does a pretty good job of explaining that. So I also recommend that you check that out. I also have um, a number of structural videos. However, I'm also going to be putting up some new structural videos in the new year that hopefully will help you out if you're still struggling with structure. Make a structural guide. I'm going to put a, a link in the description to a couple of different beat sheets or structure guides that already exist that were created by other people, but I highly recommend that you adapt this to your own purposes, mainly because certain terminology can be harder for some people to understand and it could be better for you to come up with either your own terms for the different plot points and elements or to mix and match between different kinds of structural systems so maybe you like the way this person describes the first plot point but you like the way this person describes the pinch points you can kind of use different terminologies and mix and match to make your own structural guide because that's going to work the best for you because you'll be able to look at it and immediately understand what it means. If you look at the term first plot point and that doesn't mean anything to you, when you look at your book and you look at that area of the novel where the first plot point should happen, you're going to have a really hard time applying that method or that structure to that scene if you if that terminology doesn't immediately spark some kind of understanding in you of what you're looking for. So maybe you prefer the term point of no return or break into the middle or maybe there's a different terminology that will work for you so mix and match the terminology pull from different sources and try to make a structural system that you can look at that really speaks to you and resonates with you i also recommend that you use either word count page count or percentage of the novel to indicate where each of those elements should sit. This will help you a lot when you go to edit because you'll know exactly where you need to look for um, those elements and you can use percentages and then um, calculate where it should occur in your book based on the word count. Of course, the word count for your novel is going to be very flexible because of the nature of the process, but it's, it, it's an extremely valuable guideline that you can use that when you look at it, you'll be able to see very quickly where, where things just aren't working. If your first plot point is at the 50% mark, that tells you right away that you need to cut or move half of the scenes in the first quarter. So I find that that's the best place to start for your methodology for polishing your novel is get a really strong and solid structural system with terminology that you can understand. Outline as you write or at least before you edit. As a methodological pantser, it's going to be extremely helpful for you to be able to see your entire novel at a glance. So an outline is absolutely essential because you'll be able to see very quickly and easily where all your scenes are falling, how the structure is looking, and it'll give you a very valuable tool in the editing process. So I recommend that you either create the outline as you go, writing basically just one or two sentences to remind yourself of what happens in each scene, or if you find that that disrupts the flow of your writing process, you can create the outline before you move into the editing phase. Regardless of if that's 10% or 20% or 80% into the first draft, at the point that you start to move into editing, I highly recommend that you create an outline. One to two sentences per scene, as well as the start and end page number for, those, for the scenes can be extremely helpful. Make edits in the outline first. It can be really tempting to jump right into the novel and start cutting and moving scenes around and adding new scenes and things like that, but that's going to potentially cost you a lot of time. You can expedite the process and be much more efficient if you start your editing process with the outline. You can just make a copy of your outline and then move scenes around or make notes of how you're gonna change the scenes and change the content and things like that and test it against your methodology. So see how is this impacting the structure? If you move a big chunk from the first quarter to the second quarter, how does that shift to all of those page numbers? How's that affecting where the plot points hit? How's it affecting the scene structure and in the sort of chain reaction between scenes? If you do this in the outline before you start making changes in your novel, it's going to help you to catch a lot of issues and mistakes and plot holes way earlier in the process. This will save you potentially months of editing if you use your methodology at the editing phase on an outline before you start doing it in the novel itself. Don't be afraid to throw things away. 
Often with this writer type, they're going to end up throwing away more things in the long run than they end up keeping. And for some writers, this can cause a lot of stress or a lot of anxiety, especially if you tend to emotionally connect to everything that you create. To be honest, methodological pantsers are actually really good at coming up with a lot of ideas very quickly, so you're probably going to come up with a better idea later on anyway. So try not to feel too upset or too much pain if possible. And some of this is just sort of um, getting used to that process of throwing a lot of things away and it will get easier with time. And cutting something that's a great idea but doesn't work for this story, it's ultimately for the best and it's ultimately going to make your novel stronger and better. Rate your scenes. More recently, I have been seeing a lot of success with writers in rating their scenes on two different elements. So the first element is going to be scene structure. If you struggle with scene structure, I do have videos about it. There are lots of articles and things online, but as with story structure, you might just need to find the right explanation or the right person to explain it to you or the right terminology to get it to sort of click. In a nutshell, you're really just looking for a goal, conflict, and an outcome in each scene. So the outcome would be sort of the impact on the plot and how it moves the character in a new direction. I did recently make a flow chart for how to fix a bad scene, which you might also find helpful. Um, but once you have that structural system in place, rating your scenes based on their structure, but then also rating your scenes based on their integration into the plot will really help you in the editing phase to nail down what exactly is wrong with scenes, but also to give you a better sense of what scenes can be moved and which can't. So to explain a little bit more, with the integration into the plot, we're really looking to rate scenes on how well they fit where they're positioned. So how well do they flow from the scene before and after? and how well do they suit the quarter or the section of the novel where the scene is currently placed. So you could use a grading system like ABCD, or you could use a number system like one through 10 or one through five. So say you use a number system of one through five, you might have a scene that's a one out of five for structure, meaning the structure is very poor, but a five out of five for integration into the plot, meaning you definitely wanna keep the scene and it's definitely positioned where it needs to be positioned in the book. You might also have a scene that's five out of five with structure, but one out of five for integration into the plot, meaning it really isn't fitting where it's currently placed at all. And it, it doesn't really flow from the scene before and it doesn't really flow into the scene after. The reason that I think this is so helpful is it can help you to look at sections of the novel and see which scenes definitely need to be there and which scenes you have the option to move or how you would need to alter the novel or that section of the novel in order to better integrate that scene into that position so that you don't have to move it. So this can give you a lot of valuable information. It can also help you if at this stage you want to ignore scenes that have structural issues, assuming that you will be able to fix and polish a structure later on. And instead you just want to focus on integrating the scenes into the plot so that you can solve the bigger picture, bigger structural problem first. So let me know whether or not this method helps you. This is sort of a newer method I've been trying out with some different writers and some of them have found it to be extremely helpful in sort of expediting the editing process by giving them a narrower focus on what the problem is with particular scenes. Leave the beta readers for the very end. Because your process is relatively chaotic and you're going to be doing a lot of building up and cutting and refining with your ideas, Having beta readers or critique partners enter the process too early can actually be counterproductive because you're going to be using methodologies to determine what works for your novel and what doesn't, what's best for it. And it really muddies the water if you end up with a beta reader that says, for example, that this subplot is our favorite part of the book, but that subplot actually doesn't fit the themes of your book or doesn't integrate into the plot in the way that you want. And you ultimately have to then make a decision to cut it, doing what's best according to your methodology, or keep it because a beta reader told you that they really like it. I think for this type, beta readers can really muddy the waters. I think they can sometimes also send this type onto or sort of down a rabbit hole of, well, maybe I should build a novel around this subplot instead of around all these other elements. And it can kind of send them into a direction that isn't 
productive or isn't really refining their vision or getting them closer to what they want. So for this type, I recommend that you save beta readers and critique partners until you really can't take the idea any further. So you've gotten to a point where you don't have any more ideas of how to fix it and it's as close to what you want as possible. Doing something, anything is better than getting stuck. This type, I think, struggles the most when they try to tell themselves that they should finish the first draft or they should finish plotting a certain section or they should finish editing this quarter or this scene or this chapter of the novel before moving on. You shouldn't in particular do anything. What you should do is keep moving forward and doing anything to move forward is always better than getting stuck. So if you're looking at an outline and you're trying to refine the plot of a certain section and it's just not happening, you're gonna do way better putting that aside and moving on to something that you can do than sit there staring at it, getting frustrated, getting stressed, letting that sort of tension build up as you're not solving the problem. Just do something. Methodological pantsers tend to do really well when they have a lot of different ways and approaches and things that they can do per session. So maybe you edit one chapter for a little while and then maybe you write half of a new scene and then maybe you try looking at your outline and moving around some scenes to try to refine the structure. You don't have to stick with just one activity or one thing per writing session. When you start to run out of steam, move on to something else. This will let you to maintain enthusiasm and energy for long, deep work sessions on your novel where you're really accomplishing a lot and looking at a lot of solutions and material and options really quickly rather than getting stuck just staring at a screen because you're trying to force yourself to use your intuition or force yourself to plot in advance when it's just not happening for you. Embrace the chaos. Often for this type, one of the biggest challenges is just embracing the fact that their method is not going to be linear, it's not going to be a straight line of progress, it's going to be a very chaotic flip-flopping between writing and editing and plotting, and it's not going to look as clean or simple or smooth as some of the other writing types. And it can be really helpful to just accept that that's who you are and that's what works for you. Because if you give yourself grief or you feel bad that you don't know exactly what's going to happen before you write it or you don't understand the character's emotional journey until you're almost done writing. If that makes you feel bad or it makes you feel like you're not a real writer, that's not going to help you in any way and that's only going to make it harder for you to stay motivated. You can't force yourself to fit into a hole that you don't fit into. There's nothing wrong with this building up and refining method of developing a novel. They often can develop some of the best novels through this method. It's not a detriment to you unless you let it be emotionally charged, essentially. It doesn't mean that you're not a good writer because you're not high in intuition. The reader doesn't care how you got there. They just care that you got there. They will enjoy your book exactly the same as a book written by an intuitive writer as long as you get there eventually. So don't worry about the fact that you don't fit into this sort of poetic, intuitive pantser kind of vision of a writer and that you don't fit into this sort of storyboarding, meticulously laying everything out in advance type of writer. You're just your own beast and that's okay and you'll get there eventually. And honestly, methodological pantser, pantsers are absolutely fantastic at creating ideas and solving problems very rapidly actually and um, producing very large amounts of content very quickly but only if they can embrace this kind of more chaotic moving back and forth kind of process because that's just how their brains work or conceptualize um, the novel writing process. So if you let yourself do that freely and you don't feel like well I should get through this scene without editing or I should stick out the first draft, if you can just do what comes naturally to you you're going to be fine and you're going to get there eventually. So that is all I have for you today for this video. I know it was kind of long. I hope that you found some tips and tricks that are helpful for you. If you are a methodological pantser and you have some ideas of tips or tricks that you found helpful, what's worked for you, what hasn't worked for you, I'm sure that everybody would absolutely love to read about that in the comments if you have some things that you would like to share. So. That's all for me for today. I will be back with the other writer type videos. I might stagger them out with some other types of content, but it shouldn't be too long in any case until I get them up. So in the meantime, 
Take care, embrace your writer type, and happy writing.